Welcome to another edition of the Ashmore Law Firm Google Hangout. Welcome everybody. They they have great answers every week, and we're starting to utilize a hashtag called Ask Ashmore. So uh, th this group here has all the information you need. Welcome uh, Gary Ashmore, Lori Ashmore, and Christy Gray to the show. Uh, today we're going to be talking about do I need a trust? Now what I find interesting is uh, Lori wrote an article about this in one of the local newspapers about do I need a trust and an attorney she said not necessarily. I was shocked that you were honest that you weren't just trying to sell something. Uh, why do you say that that A sometimes you may not need a trust? Well you know Chris depending on what your goals and objectives are you may not need one and I in my article I think I told people yes you can pick your chin up off the floor as much as a, as an attorney I would love <laughs> well, to take money from it, you it so far not necessary. Um, there are only really special circumstances you know we do trusts for one of a variety of reasons one is asset protection um, that way creditors uh, ex-spouses can't get to your money Another one is for tax planning, but you know we have a 5.34 million dollar estate tax exemption that that knocks quite a few of us out of the need for a trust because of that. The other reasons why you can create a trust is for privacy, which is the big one. Um, another reason why people create trusts is if they have real property outside of the state of Texas a trust can be very beneficial and can save them a lot of money in the long run and we can explain that in a little bit let's see the other reasons why you may need a trust is um, if you've got that child or that spouse and Chris you're probably gonna laugh at this that is what we call a spendthrift what that means <laughs> is uh, whether you give them fifty dollars or five thousand dollars or fifty thousand dollars they're gonna spend it like that okay we can create trusts to preserve their money so it lasts a little longer for them I'm the one that spends all the money my wife is good at it okay so oh, we'll wait then I need to talk to your wife <laughs> yeah you need to talk to her about me uh, so we'll go through all those specifically but let's do a big overview first and then uh, we'll have uh, yeah, some folks ask some questions through Twitter or Gary can even ask some questions as well. Uh, the main one that people typically ask is what is the difference between a will and a trust? That's a good question. So people need to realize a will only takes effect when you die. Now we do have trusts that we create in our will. Again, only takes effect when you die. But then I also create trusts that are effective now where we call it a living trust. You've created it while you're alive. You have funded it, meaning you've put assets or money in the trust while you're alive. And then it makes the distributions according to the terms of that trust. Okay. And people say, well, is trust only used for money? Not necessarily, correct? No, not necessarily. You can put real estate. You can, um, a trust can hold multiple things. Okay. And you, in the article, uh, I believe it was the White Rock uh, Lake Weekly, plus you can also see more information on the Ashmore Law Firm. You'll always give out great blogs and great information and your social sites. So everyone make sure to follow that. You give five reasons. Let's kind of hit through some of these more specific ones. The first one, uh, out-of-state property. What is that about? Correct. What that means is if I, and I'll use myself as an example, um, if I own property, say, in Colorado, and I die, and I'm a resident here in Texas, if that property is just in my name alone, not only do we have to go through the probate process here in Texas of collecting all of my assets here in Texas, but then you have to go through the probate process in Colorado, whatever that may be, just to take care of that real property. Whereas if you put it in a trust, which means if I have the Lori Ashmore Peters Trust, uh -huh. and I put that real property in the trust today, when I die, I don't have to do anything else in Colorado. Okay. It's already taken care of, and that real property is distributed according to what I say in my trust. Okay. All right. Interesting. Okay, so uh, number two, special needs planning for a loved one. Yes, you know, with Medicaid, with these government benefits, a lot of them are what we call means tested. 
What that means is you have to show the government that you do not have over X amount of dollars or that you don't have over X amount of what we call resources. Um, for instance, Medicaid, you know, you may not be, you can't have more than $2,000 a month to be eligible for Medicaid. In simplistic terms, a lot more goes into it. But with the special needs planning, what I can do is I can preserve $500,000 for my child that special needs, but also allow them to be eligible for the government benefit. And their trust isn't there to supplement what the government benefit pays for. It's there, I'm sorry, reverse that. It's not there to supplant okay, okay. what the government benefit pays for. It's there to supplement. What that means is if I have um, a loved one that is in a nursing home and they're on Medicaid, they meet the qualifications for Medicaid, and they're in a room that's, that's a Medicaid room, they have a trust that may have about $500,000 in that trust. That trust can't help pay for the room to get them into a private room, but what the trust can pay for is if Medicaid won't pay for a new van with everything that they need in it, that trust money can be used for the new van. Okay. If that individual is used to taking a trip to Disney World every year, Medicaid isn't going to pay for that. That trust can pay for that trip. But it just can't, if they're in a, in a semi-private room and they have a roommate and Medicaid is out $2,000 a month because that's what they pay for that room, you can't say, ooh, you know what, I'm going to put an additional $3,000 to the room from this trust, so that's $5,000 a month, and I can get my loved one in a really great private room. You can't do that, huh. but you can use the money for anything that government benefit doesn't pay for. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Okay. So number three, now these are really good tips, by the way. Perfect assets protection for your children. That's a big one in this day and age. You know, unfortunately, the divorce rate is a lot higher than what it used to be. Uh, and I know Gary can, can talk about that since he handles a lot of that. Um, but what I tell my clients is I can create perfect asset protection for their kids. When they die, I can structure their will with trusts in it. And what it can say is there's a formula that's used. So much money goes into what we call this credit shelter trust or bypass trust. Okay. Money goes in there. The end beneficiaries are their kids. But the trust is there for the lifetime of their kids. I have two small kids. The way my trust is set up is when I die, if Rick is alive, it goes a certain amount goes to Rick. The rest, a certain amount goes to this trust. My kids throughout their entire lifetime can get distributions for health, education, maintenance, and support. We need that language in there, but it's broad enough language that it can pretty much pay and take care of a lot of things. Okay. But it's there for the lifetime of my kids. The other option is to say, you know, when my kids turn age 25, they get a third of what's in the trust. When they turn 30, they get a half of what's in the trust. Okay. And when they turn age 35, they get whatever's left in the trust. So say, for example, I have 300000 in this trust. At age 25, I'm giving my child $100,000. It's Here's a check for $100,000. Do with it whatever you will. If they get married at the age of 22 and get divorced at the age of 26, which unfortunately we can see that, uh -huh. their spouse could potentially take up to one half of that $100,000. Wow, unless you have this set up. Unless you have this set up where it's there for their lifetime, but the end beneficiary is your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. And, and Not mentioned... only that, but if they, at the age of 35, the trust terminates and now they have a million dollars, if they run into what we call that proverbial school bus and, and, and they, they are in a car accident, it's their fault, there are people that are severely injured and they get sued, if that money is theirs outright, 
then the creditors, the, the defendants can come get to the money. But if everything is set up correctly, they can't come pierce the trust. Gotcha. Okay. So it is perfect asset protection. Okay. And Chris, Chris and, let me just weigh in for a minute. Yeah, that's uh, what I was going to toss to you. Go ahead. One of, the, one of the things a lot of people don't understand is they think just because their kids turn 18, they're adults. Um, and that is true legally from that perspective. But from what a lot of what Lori's talking about is you as the trust maker or the one creating the trust can actually dictate at what age your parents or, or what, what age your kids will receive that money. Um, a lot of clients, when I'm talking to them, just assume that I've got this trust and when I die, it gets paid out to or, or it's set up in such a way that when my child turns 18, they get paid the money that's in the trust. The, the actual trust maker can create what Lori's talking about, that you can give them the money or so much of it at age 25, age 28, age 30. I mean, you can pick the ages. We even have some people that, um, because people are living longer nowadays, they're creating trusts at an older age, and they're not allowing distributions till their children turn 50 or 55. Wow. Wow. Or even 60 year old, years old, so as to protect them as they get older, if they are disabled, if they're retired from their job, they've got additional income because it was set up to pay out when they were older in life. Gotcha. And, she, and Lori mentioned that you do a lot of divorce stuff. How important is it to have this stuff set up when you see cases with divorce? Well, it's extremely important. I'm trying to advise more of my clients to create trusts uh, even before divorce. In fact, I'm doing it uh, advising clients even before they get married. Um, you know, I'm doing a lot of premarital agreements now, um, and that's not to say that if people are on their second or third marriage, it's not a bad idea to create a trust uh, so as to protect their money, protect their assets, keep it for their kids by a prior marriage uh, separate. Uh, and or just keep their separate property separate from the spouse that uh, that they're married. Okay, all great information here. Once again, I'm going to remind everybody you can go to the Ashmore uh, Law Firm website, follow them on social media, or use the hashtag Ask Ashmore. Plus, they give out free books and things like that as well. So, I mean, they're they're a wealth of knowledge. Uh, this is great inform information. We're going to do two more here. Number four on trust, uh, privacy. What are we talking about here? So, so privacy, obviously privacy is very important for all of us. Um, when someone passes away, you might have to file with the court what's called an inventory appraisement and list of claims. And what that says is, you know what, as of the date of death, Lori Ashmore owned all of this property. She owned this real estate, the legal description, the physical description, and how much it's worth. She had these accounts. She had an account, you know, XXX216, Bank of America, this location for, you know, $5,262.22. It's very, very specific. And that's, anyone can pick it up. I, I can go down to the courthouse and if I know a celebrity just passed away and I think they may have filed, they had to file this paperwork. I can go find out what that celebrity had and where everything was. Whereas if it's put in a trust, it's completely private. Okay. You don't file anything with the court as to what's in the trust. And why so is that important? I have clients think? that have privacy issues or just don't want their, you know, second cousin twice removed, don't want them to know how much money they had or what they had, then we create a trust for them and it's completely private. 